How y'all doing good people? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. While you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also hit that post notification bell so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. So please be careful out there. Don't get yourself scammed. If you want up to 15 free stocks, Moomoo is going to give you up to 15 free stocks. When you open a new Moomoo brokerage account, you put $100 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you up to five free stocks. You put $1,000 in that brokerage account, they're going to give you up to 15 free stocks. There's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo link. Open up your new Moomoo account today. Go get that free stock. Go get that free money. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Had a little frog in my throat. In today's video, we're going to talk about what these people don't want you to know about getting rich. When I talk about these people, guys, I'm talking about Wall Street. I'm talking about banks. I'm talking about car dealerships. The car industry as a whole. I'm talking about credit card companies. I'm talking about the student loan process. I'm talking about payday lenders, tote the title lenders. All of these people, guys, have a vested interest in you not knowing how to get rich. And that vested interest is they all want to make money off of you. And the only way they make money off of you is if you don't know how to make money off of them, if you don't know how to keep your money in your pocket and invest it in assets to build wealth. See, they want you to take the money out of your pocket and give it to them in the form of loans to buy stuff. Because they know the only way they exist is when you buy stuff. In most cases that you don't need. These people do not have your best interest at heart, guys. I often ask folks, when you go to a bank, what do you go in the bank and what do you ask them? See, most people will go in the bank and ask for financial advice. You would think that makes sense. Yeah, I'm going to go in the bank. I'm going to ask for some advice. The problem is the bank has no vested interest in you learning anything about finances, guys. Because if you learn about finances, you'll know how banks make their money. They make their money off your deposits. They make their money off you coming in and them convincing you to get a credit card. Them convincing you to get a loan for a new car. Them convincing you to get a loan for a vacation. You ever been in a bank and you see a big old sign when you walk in, vacation savings account? <laughs> yeah, that's a trap. They're telling you, hey, put your money in here and we'll help you save for your vacation. <laughs> Guys, that's a trap. I just want y'all to know that. That is a trap. Don't fall into that trap, guys. Here's the situation. You need to learn that going into the bank, going into the car dealership, going online, signing up for credit cards, all of that stuff is a trap. It's a trillion and trillions and trillions of dollar industries. And it's all predicated on keeping you broke. The only way they survive is if you are broke. But if you get smart and you say to yourself, you know, I don't need this unnecessary debt. 
I don't need 10 credit cards. Maybe I need one that I'm gonna pay off every single month when I get the, when I get the bill. See, they don't want customers like that. They don't want consumers like that who are fiscally responsible. They want people who are not fiscally responsible. They want the person that wants the 10 credit cards and max them all out, chasing points and sky miles and all this other crap that they fool you to think you getting something for free. Guys, these companies ain't dumb. All you guys out here chasing these sky miles, you're chasing these uh, cash back, you're chasing whatever you're chasing with these credit cards, these people ain't dumb. They know the majority of y'all gonna fall behind on your payments. They know the majority of y'all ain't gonna be able to pay your balances. And then they get to hit you with, who? Trillions of dollars worth of interest. See, they go to these companies and they partner with them and say, hey, we got all these people on our platform. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna offer them some discounts. And we're gonna, we're gonna send millions and millions and millions of people your way that you can then cross sell and upsell and make them buy other things that they don't need. But in order for us to send these millions of people to you, we need you to offer them a little slight discount on their hotel stay or offer them a slight discount on their spa treatment. Whatever it is, these credit card companies are dangling in front of you. It's all a trap. Just like that vacation savings account at your local bank is a trap. You got to understand something, guys. The more in debt you are, the less likely you are to get rich and build wealth. The more unnecessary debt you have. See, I'm still a big believer in good debt and bad debt. Everybody don't believe in that way of thinking. See, I think any debt that puts money in your pocket is good debt. Any debt that takes money out of your pocket is bad debt. And, and, and for me, for years, I stayed out of bad debt, but I would always borrow money that I considered good debt. When I would borrow money to buy real estate for income, to put a tenant in that real estate and get a, and get a rental check every month that covered all the expenses, paid the mortgage payment, and put money in my pocket. See, I consider that good debt. Bad debt is when you go out and buy a car. It depreciates as soon as you drive it off the lot. If it's a new car, it appreciates by, depreciates by 20% as soon as you drive it off the lot. If it's a used car, maybe 10% it depreciates as soon as you drive it off the lot. And then from here on out, the life of that car, you have it, it's gonna do what? Take money out of your pocket. Especially if you're not using that car for, to make money. And most people don't. Most people just use their cars for leisure. Very few people use their cars as a business. Most people use their cars for leisure. So that car that you just bought is a depreciating asset. Plus, it's taking money out of your pocket every month in the form of interest that you're paying to the bank and repair and maintenance, insurance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Just telling you guys, you better, you better figure out what's going on in this world. These people don't got your back. They really don't. You better figure out what's happening and, and, and decide what you want to do as it relates to getting yourself in a position to win. The only way you're going to put yourself in a position to win is you got to stay out of debt. You got to stay out of consumer debt. You got to stay out of bad debt. All of these people I just ran you through, they have one thing in common. They want to fleece you. They want to beat you out of every dime that you have. Why? Because it makes them rich. If they teach, they have no, like I told y'all, banks have no reason to teach you anything about finances because if they did, you would understand they make money off of you. That's the only way they make money. In most cases, they take your deposits, invest those deposits, lend those deposits, and they make interest income. And then they turn around and they charge you fees for just having your money in their bank. That's called non-interest income. So they're making interest income off of you and they're making non-interest income. You're the only reason banks exist. You and I. Yeah, come on in. Sit down with us and let's have a financial 
consultation with you. As soon as you get in there, they ask you a bunch of questions and the questions are just leading to so they can recommend products and services to you. Have you ever walked into a bank and sat down with, with a, a, a personal banker or a bank manager and they've said, no, you're great. You don't need nothing. We don't recommend you, you buy any of our products and services. <laughs> Have you ever went and sat down with a bank and they've done that? No, nope, you're good. Hey, you're doing great. We don't recommend nothing. I guarantee you that'll never happen. They're going to always recommend something. There's going to be something that they're going to recommend to you. I promise you, because they don't make any money if they don't. This is how they make money, guys. Think about when you walk into a car dealership. You walk into the car dealership. Have they ever said, you know something? I think your car you have right now is perfect for you. You don't need a new car. Now, nah, we're not gonna sell you one today. You're good. Keep that car for the next five years. Get everything you can get out of it. Take the money that you would have put into this new car, invest it in assets to build wealth, to, to, to get to your pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Name one car dealership that you've walked into that has had that conversation with you over the years. I would venture to say zero. Why don't they do that? They got no vested interest, guys, in making you guys rich. Because if they make you rich, or if they give you the secret sauce to get rich, that makes them poor. That makes them less rich. And they don't want that. They care nothing about you, man. These people care nothing about you. They'll take every dime that you have. You ever notice when you go to the dealership, the type of customer service you get when you're there to buy a car? Have you guys ever experienced that? Oh, goodness gracious. Do you want some cookies? Would you like a drink? Oh, here you go. Here's a t-shirt. Here's a hat. Oh, yeah. They, they, they pamper you. You want some champagne? They pamper you. As soon as you buy the car, something go wrong with it. You get back to them, they're a whole different company. Now you got to deal with that service department. Yep, the, 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 that new car salesman, saleswoman, can't find them. Now you got to deal with this service department who, in a lot of cases, guys, are rude, zero customer service. But at the end of the day, you got no choice. Why? You've already signed on the dotted line. You've already bought the car. You already got this big old loan out there that you went and got to, to get the car, all right? So all I'm telling you guys is get smart, wise up, understand what's going on with these people. They don't have your best interest at heart. I often tell people, don't go to banks for financial advice. No, when you go to a bank, or at least for me, when I go to a bank, I know exactly what I'm, I, I need. I don't want nothing else. I ain't finna make no appointment with nobody. I just want to make my deposit. Or if I am there to get a loan for a piece of real estate, because that's really the only time I would get anything from a bank is if I'm buying a piece of real estate for income, then most times and not, I just go online and do my application. I don't even go in. I don't even deal with people because I know when you get in there, all they're going to want to do is try to sell you something. I mean, hell, I'm in the teller line trying to make a deposit. The teller is busy trying to sell me a credit card. Then just process my dang own transactions so I can get out of there. She, she's trying to sell me a credit card. And, I ain't, and I'm not blaming the teller because I know there's pressure on those employees in that bank to, to, to produce. Or they may not have a job. Right? It's just like if you walk into a department store. It's the same way in a bank. Those people that work in that department store, they got to sell stuff. Or, 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 or they don't make no money. Same thing in the bank now. When you walk in there, those people got to sell stuff. I don't care if it's the teller all the way to the manager. They got to sell you something in order to make money, to make bonuses and that kind of stuff. And again, I'm not knocking the employees. They're just doing what they have to do to survive, right? They're employed by this bank. They're employed by this dealership, right? They're employed by this credit card company. You ever notice when you call your credit card company, all the stuff they try to sell you in addition to what you already have before they even help you with what you actually call for, right? It's, it's, it's insane. Same thing with these mobile 
uh, these cell phone service companies. I was with AT&T for many years, and I ain't knocking AT&T. I'm just telling you my experience with them. I was with AT&T for, whew, I don't know, 10, 12 years. So I decided to switch to somebody else. Did everything I was supposed to have did. Closed out the account, everything. Don't you know those people still charge me the full uh, monthly bill for, for a cell phone I didn't even have? <laughs> and then when I called them, <laughs> he's, oh, you got to turn off your automatic debit. I said, guys, I closed the account. I mean, it should automatically turn off. I closed the account. You verified that I closed it, but you still auto debited me. And again, nightmare trying to get my refund, still ain't got my refund. See, this is what I'm telling you though. But now had I been calling to sign up for AT&T service, oh my goodness, they'd have rolled out the red carpet, sold me everything I did need, bundled me in all kind of crap that I did need. See, this is what I'm telling you guys, this is how it is, but you gotta, you, you gotta know this and you gotta be careful not to put yourself in harm's way. Because like I said, these people, they don't care, man. They care nothing about you. I gotta admit, man, really, none of these companies care anything about you, to be honest with you. But, but if you know that, you use that to your advantage. That's why in 2024, in this wealth transfer blueprint that I'm talking about, I'm using these companies to build my wealth, right? Not to build their wealth, I'm using them to build my wealth. I take my money, Instead of going out buying stuff I don't need, I take that money, I put it in companies that I believe give me a chance to multiply my money. And that's what you got to do. You got you to stay away from buying stuff that you don't need, getting loans, getting into more debt that you don't need. In my opinion, over these next 10 years, guys, while we're doing this wealth transfer blueprint, we, should, we shouldn't be buying anything extravagant, right? If I need a new car, if I need a car, if my old car is just at its last leg and I need a car, I go buy me a dependable used car in these next 10 years. I don't go splurge on some Mac Daddy brand new $70,000 BMW. Don't do it. Don't do it. Go out and get you a pendable A to B car for, for, for $50,000 less, right? 15 or 20 grand, call it a day. You're going to do the same thing you're going to do in that $70,000 BMW. That's my point. We have to be careful, guys. We cannot take this precious money that we have and, and spend it to make these people wealthy, more rich, more extravagant. We, we can't do that. We got to stop that. We got to get to the point where we don't make these people rich anymore. Because every time we make them rich, we keep us broke. How do you do that? Well, guys, you got to get your, your mind right. You got to get your behavior right with money. That's the number one thing. You got to get yourself into a point where you don't allow those financial distractions to come into your life. Right? When I go to the bank, I'm pretty stern with them. Nope. I don't want to meet with nobody. I don't want nothing. All I want to do is make my deposit. All I want to do is make my withdrawal. Bam, I'm out of there. I don't need no follow-ups because I keep quite a bit of money at times in my bank accounts. So people see that and they think, oh, golly, this guy's right for oh, many products we have. Would you like to meet one of our financial advisors? Nope, I do not. And again, I'm not knocking their financial advisor, but I also understand that financial advisor eats what he kills. He only gets paid commission when he sells something to me. And he's going to probably try to put me in a product that's beneficial to him or her they're not gonna put me in the right product that's beneficial for me it's gonna be beneficial for them in their pocketbook that's how the world works guys when you understand that you'll be much better off in this game of building wealth same thing on social media guys no different these people on social media i would say 80 85 percent of them who talking about financial this and financial that I wouldn't trust them with a 10-foot pole. I just wouldn't. Because most of them, 80, about 85% of them are out here just trying to griff you, con you. Right? None of a lot of them don't have any background in what they're talking about in their videos or on their TikTok. I mean, you got a you got 15-year-old kids on TikTok talking about building wealth 
investing in something. <laughs> Ain't got no experience. They're 15. You, you, you just started. <laughs> Don't even get me started with that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I mean, you're 15, man. Can't even drive. But you're on TikTok telling people about giving people financial advice. Selling financial products. 15 years old. And here's the sad part. People fall for it. <laughs> I mean, it's just amazing to me the stuff I see on social media around building wealth and what people fall for. It's just amazing to me. And all that is is people trying to find shortcuts. They don't want to do the hard work. Most people want it easy. They want the easy button. They want an easy button. They don't want to do anything that requires them to get themselves uncomfortable or a level of difficulty. They just don't want to do it. So here, here's the situation. <laughs> you can fall into that boat if you want to. Trust these people on, online if you want to. And then I'm telling you what's going to happen is, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is, is you're going to get yourself into financial weeds, right? All I'm telling you, get yourself into the financial weeds. And when you do, you're going to be stuck like Chuck. So all I can tell you, man, is, is keep yourself out of financial harm. Stop spending money on things you don't need. Stop taking out loans for stuff to make other people wealthy. Stop listening to these people in these social media platforms who have no credibility. Here's what I tell you. If you think somebody on social media knows what they're doing, get their real name, go out on Google, and do some research on them. But you gotta have their real name. And guess what? If someone is online selling you something that they can help you reach financial freedom, you should know their real name. This shouldn't be a disguise. This shouldn't be a, no. You're on here telling me you can teach me how to build wealth. I need to know something about you. What's your real name, right? And then what you do from there is you take that information and you go out and vet that person. Right. I tell people all the time, y'all know my real name. I don't use no smoke and mirrors. If you want to know something about me, all you got to do is go online. Go online, type in Richard Fane and I'll come up. And you, you can learn everything you, you need to know about me. Right? Anything that's public, public information, you can find out. You, you, you can find out if I don't, you know, if I'm lying about. The real estate that I've owned, you can find out if I done been to jail or if I'm a criminal. You can find out anything you want to find out about somebody if you got their full name. Now, you ain't, you, you, yeah, I, I may not find out everything, but I'll find out enough to know if this person is legit or not or they're scamming. Problem is, most people won't do that. They won't spend the time to do that. They'll look at this person on social media. Ooh, golly, they got a beautiful house. They got a Lambo. Ooh, they got a fancy watches. Yeah, they talk a good game, got a good mouthpiece, can talk real good. They doing all this, this traveling. I mean, they're talking about all this wealth they're building, all these projects they got going on. My goodness, how can this person do all of this in 24 hours? They're just amazing. Golly, I wish I could just do a little bit of that. Ooh, I'm going to trust this person. I'm going to get in this person's Discord. I'm going to get in this person's Patreon, paid Patreon. I'm going I'm to buy this person's course. Oh, yeah, they tell me they can, they can teach me how to day trade, and they will give me all of the best tips to day trade. They're going to give me all the secrets. They're going to give me all the secrets to Forex trading. They're going to give me all the secrets to buy real estate with no money. Bad credit. No job. They're going to teach me how to buy real estate with none of that stuff. Guys, come on, man. That's a make-believe world, man. I'm telling you, that don't exist. It's a grift. It's a con. What do you think the word con comes from? Confidence. Con comes from confidence. They're trying to win your confidence by showing you all the the bling and the bling and the, and the, and the lifestyle and the, and, the, and the private jets. 
The pictures with Floyd Mayweather. The pictures with this celebrity, that celebrity. And all the time they're running a confidence game on you. A con game. But we are so looking to find a way to shortcut to get to wealth. We will allow ourselves to believe anything. Because we're trying to figure out a way to shortcut getting the financial freedom. We don't want to pay the price. We don't want to go the long road. We want to find a short road. The problem is with the short road, you're going to run into a lot of grifters, a lot of confidence men, a lot of scammers, a lot of people that just flat out want to take advantage of you. And these people that I'm talking about are out there, guys. These banks, these car dealerships, these credit card companies. I would even say some of the student loans. It's a racket, guys. That student loan thing is, is, is nothing but a racket. Right? It's a racket. It's a business where they make billions of dollars a year. Doing what? Basically scamming people. I'm telling you. And I know some of you are saying, well, I would have never got been able to go to college if I wouldn't have got a student loan. Well, guys, you made that decision. I went to college. I ain't had no student loans. Well, you play football. Well, okay. But I still went to college and didn't have no student loans. I mean, there, there are millions of people that go to college without student loans. What do they do? They go out and get a job. Right? They, they work. Right? They do whatever it takes to, 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 to make tuition. They get four or five of them as roommates and all of them live together and do their thing. That's the thing. But, but see, that is the thing you got to think about. But if you don't think about that, w w what good is it? So, so, so all I'm telling you is you got to be careful when you're out here in these financial streets because nobody cares about you. Everybody knows you're the goose that lays the golden egg. All of these companies, all of these folks on social media, they know you're the goose that can lay the golden egg. So everybody wants your attention. The problem is everybody don't have your best outcome at heart. All they're thinking about is them. So here's what my recommendation is, and I'm going to let y'all out of here. We talk about this wealth transfer blueprint for 2024, taking a certain amount of money, putting it in assets, that will multiply it over the next 10 years. That's how you build wealth, guys. No shortcuts, no easy button, no scam. Just taking your hard earned money, making the decision not to invest in other people's dreams, not to invest in other people's pocketbooks, right? But invest in you, invest in your freedom by taking that money every single month and buying assets. I've given you guys the assets that I'm buying. SPLG, S&P 500 ETF. FTEC, Information Technology ETF. And then the Magnificent Seven. That's it. I'm buying nothing more than that. That's all I'm buying, right? And I'm gonna do that over and over, month after month, year after year, till I get to the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. 10 years. I'm going to put my head down, delay gratification, and run hard for 10 years. And I want you guys to come with me on that journey, if you don't mind. If you want to build wealth, come with me on that journey. First step is, like I said, you got to have a brokerage account. So for those of y'all that don't have a brokerage account, there's a link down in the description box for Moomoo. Moo. When you open their brokerage account and put $100 in it, they're going to give you $5. I meant to say they're going to give you five free stocks. So you, you, you put $100 in there, they're going to give you five free stocks. You put $1,000 in there, they're going to give you 15 free stocks. But now you're ready to start building wealth. You start, you, you're ready to copy my plan, which is the three assets I just told you about. You can copy my plan, follow me along, rock with me, or you can pick your own investments. Because I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just here as a guide. I'm just a guide. I'm just a guy giving you information. I'm an information giver. Right. But if you want to rock with me and copy my plan and follow along, then you're more than welcome to do that. 
but it's your financial freedom. I'm just a guy who is here for guidance to kind of show you the way, right? But I can't make the decisions for you. You got to make those decisions. The decision you got to make is I'm not going to make other people wealthy. I'm going to make me wealthy. That's the decision you got to make. Now, if you want that, like I said, if you want the Moomoo Moo brokerage account, there's a link down in the description box of this video. Go click on that Moomoo Moo link. Open up your Moomoo Moo account today and come follow me. Rock with me. I'm going to be making videos all 2024 using the Moomoo Moo app um, as my brokerage account, right? My, my method of buying my paper assets. Now, guys, I'm out here in the wild blue yonder, so you're going to hear some noise. So just hang in there with me. I'm about done. So that's the blueprint. That's the way for us to build wealth and not allow these people to keep us broke. It's one way or the other. Either I'm going to build wealth for me and my family or I'm going to build wealth for somebody else. Those are your only choices, guys. That's it. So, so decide what you want to do. All right. I'm deciding to build wealth for me and my family, not for somebody else. Guys, I'm about to check out of here. Appreciate y'all rocking with me this morning. Lock it in with a thumbs up if you appreciate the content. Lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. Um, I'll be back this afternoon, early evening with my second live stream of the day. Uh, I hope you guys check in and participate. I'll be on a different financial topic this afternoon. And I'm also, during the day, I'm gonna load an edited video uh, on a different topic as well. So that's what I'm gonna do. That's my commitment to you guys is to provide you all this financial content every day, at least three times a day, so that you understand what options are out there for you. So you gotta understand guys, learning is something that has to be repeated. In order to learn something, you gotta do repetition on it. And, and I understand that. People learn through repetition. That's the reason I make so much content because I know you guys learn through repetition because that's the way human beings learn. We learn through seeing something over and over, doing something over and over, then all of a sudden the light bulb comes on. So rock with me. If you want to rock with me, I certainly would appreciate it. Like I said, lock it in with a thumbs up before you get out of here. Thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness. Never stop believing in yourself. Stay healthy, get wealthy, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.